calculate the coordinates of E, the midpoint of A, B. So we're given the coordinates of A and the coordinates of B. So it should be quite easy to find the coordinates of the midpoint. Let's go ahead and do that. So E will have coordinates X and Y. In order to find the X coordinate of E, we will say X coordinate of A plus X coordinate of B divided by 2. And then for the Y coordinate, Y of A plus Y of B, everything divided by 2. That is how you find the coordinates of a midpoint. So the coordinates of E, X of A is 5 and X of B is minus 3. We divide that by 2. And then Y of A is 1, Y of B is minus 3. We are still dividing by 2. So the coordinates of E, 5 minus 3 is 2, and then 2 divided by 2 is 1. 1 minus 3 is minus 2, and minus 2 divided by 2 is minus 1. So there we go. We have the coordinates of E, the midpoint of AB. Now let's take a look at 4.2. So 4.2, so this is 4.1. In 4.2, we want to calculate the length of AB and leave our answer in sad form. So the length of AB. We have the coordinates of A and the coordinates of B. So let's just go ahead and use the distance formula here uh, without complicating anything. So AB will be given by the square root of y2 minus y1 squared plus x2 minus x1 squared. So this is going to be equals to the square root of, let's take b as our second point. So what is the y value of b? Uh, not b, but a. Let's take a as our second point. The y value at a is 1. So we have 1 plus 3 squared plus x at a that is 5 and then at b we're gonna have plus 3 and we square that now it's just a matter of putting that in my calculator so i'm gonna have 4 squared plus 8 squared and i'm getting 4 square root of 5 so this is the length of a b 4 square root of 5 units there we go. We can leave it like that. That is 4.2. What about 4.3? In 4.3, we're supposed to determine the equation of the perpendicular bisector of AB in the form Y is equal to MX plus C. To find the coordinates of a perpendicular bisector, we need the gradient of AB because if we have the gradient of AB, it will be easy to find the gradient of a perpendicular bisector. So the gradient of AB, this is y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. Okay, y2 minus y1, if we take A as the second point, we're going to have 1 plus 3 divided by 5 plus, 5 plus 3, right. And then this is going to give us 4 over 8, which is 1 over 2. So we have the gradient of AB. To find the gradient of uh, the bisector, so let's say the gradient of Y. Uh, if we multiply the gradient of Y with the gradient of AB, we shall get minus 1. So clearly, the gradient of Y is going to be minus 1 divided by 1 over 2. This is equal to minus 2. So the gradient of y is equal to minus 2 and then x plus c. Right, if this is indeed a perpendicular bisector, uh, then it should touch our line AB at E because that's the midpoint of AB. So if it bisects, it cuts in half. So that line must touch AB at E. So we can substitute E if we want to find the values of c. E is 1 and minus 1. So we have 1 and minus 1. So we're going to have minus 1 being equal to minus 2 multiplied by 1 plus C. So minus 2. Let's take that to the left hand side. So we have minus 1 plus 2. So we have 1 being equal to C. 
so y is equals to minus 2x plus 1 if we substitute 1 we do get minus 1 so we can get the coordinates of e from that equation hopefully it is correct it seems to be fine if we're getting the coordinates of e but sometimes if you do the wrong thing you can substitute the right thing and get the answer but your thing is still wrong but then in this case i think our answer is correct right that is 4.3 what about 4.4 4.4 we want to show that uh, the p is equals to minus 3 we want to show that p is equals to minus 3 right in 4.3 we are talking about a perpendicular bisector so take a look at this um here's my ruler and then i'm going to connect c with e if you connect c with e and you know that e is the midpoint of a b then c e bisects a b right if c e bisects a b then c e is perpendicular to a b that is from one of the theorems we have from euclidean the radius bisects the chord right so um we have the equation of that line because it's the line we were talking about in 4.3 so this is the equation we need to use in order to find the value of p so y is going to be equals to minus 2 x is 2 plus 1 so minus 2 multiplied by 2 is minus 4 plus 1 is minus 3 so as we can see p is equals to minus 3 there we go that is 4.4 let's go ahead and do 4.5 so in 4.5 show by calculation that the equation of the cycle is x squared plus y squared minus 4x plus 6y minus 12. we know that we can write the equation of a cycle in the form x minus a squared plus y minus b squared is equal to r squared so in our case we would have x minus a is the x value at the center so that is 2 squared plus b the y value at the center the y value at the center is minus 3 so plus 3 squared this is equals to r squared so how can we possibly find r squared how can we do that well we can calculate it directly from c to a should give us r squared we have the coordinates of c and the coordinates of a so we can go ahead and find the radius instead of doing that i can actually just substitute a a is on the circumference of the cycle so that will give me the radius squared so let me substitute a if i substitute a i'm gonna have 5 minus 2 squared plus 1 plus 3 squared being equals to r squared so we have 3 squared plus 4 squared 3 squared 9 16 i think that is at 25 being equals to r squared okay i think that is fine so we know that x minus x not x minus x x minus 2 squared plus y plus 3 squared is equals to 25 r squared is 25 all we need to do now is just to expand this and this and take everything to the left hand side then we are going to be fine let's do that x minus 2 everything squared is x squared minus 4x plus 4 and then we're going to have plus y squared plus 6y plus 9 being equals to 25 so x squared plus y squared minus 4x plus 6y and then the constants 4 plus 9 minus 25 this is equal to 0 so we have x squared plus y squared minus 4x plus 6y plus let's see 4 plus 9 that is 13 minus 25 it will be minus 12 minus 12 and this is equals to zero so right we have solved uh, 4.5 we've showed clearly that uh, that is indeed the equation of the cycle what about 4.6 out of six marks
Okay, let's take a look. Let's see what is happening here. So 4.6, calculate the value of t for which the straight line y is equals to tx plus 8 will not intersect the circle. I wish the question was saying it will intersect the circle. I think that is an easy question to solve. Yeah, but it becomes a bit tricky when it says it will not intersect the circle. But right, okay, so that is the equation of the line which we are supposed to find the values of t for which it does not intersect the circle. And then the equation of our circle, we have x squared plus y squared minus 4x plus 6y minus 12 being equals to 0. So what we can do here, we can equate, not equate, but we can substitute this equation, y is equal to tx plus 8 into the equation of our circle and find the values of t for which the equation is not going to be defined. Right, because if we find the values of t for which the equation is not going to be defined, then that is the value of t for which the two things will not intersect. Let me show you. So in place of y, let's replace it with tx plus 8. So we have tx plus 8 squared minus 4x plus 6 multiplied by tx plus 8 minus 12 is equals to 0. Okay, so let's take a look. We have x squared and then we have tx plus 8 squared. We don't have a choice. We have to uh, expand that. Okay, so let's take a look at uh, tx plus 8 everything squared. So we're going to have tx multiplied by tx. So that is t squared x squared and then plus 16 tx plus 64. We have expanded that and then minus 4x. What we need now is to multiply 6 by tx plus 8. So we're going to have plus 6 tx and then plus 6 multiplied by 8. That's the, that is 48. So 48 minus 12. This is equal to 0. Let's see how we can simplify that. So x squared plus t squared x squared. Okay. Uh, we can take a common factor of x squared there. If we take a common factor of x squared, we get 1 plus t squared multiplied by x squared. Okay, that will give us, if we, cross, if we multiply out, we get x squared plus t squared x squared. So that seems fine. And then we have these two terms with x, 16 tx minus 4x and plus 6tx. So we want to take a common factor there. Which common factor can we take? We can, we can take a common factor of t. If we take a common factor of t, so let me do that, plus t, uh, we are left with 16. Do we want to take a common factor of t or a common factor of x? Let's take a common factor of x. If we take a common factor of x, we're going to be left with 16t minus 4 plus 6t, everything multiplied by x. 64 plus 48 minus 12 is 100. So we have plus 100 being equals to 0. So this is A, this is B, and this is C, right? So what we want to do now is to find the discriminant. We want to find delta, which is b squared minus 4ac, right? But we know fully well that if b squared minus 4ac is less than 0, then the roots are non-real. So we have to find values of t for which this is true. So b we have 16t, 16t plus 6t, that is 22. So we have 22t minus 4 squared. 
minus 4ac. A is 1 plus t squared. And then C is 100. We want to find values of T for which that is less than 0. So what is 22T minus 4 squared? So 22 multiplied by 22, uh, that is 484. T squared minus 176. And then minus 4 multiplied by minus 4 is plus 16. Right, so we have solved the first bracket. Now we need to come here and say uh, minus 4 multiplied by 1 plus t squared multiplied by 100. So we have minus 4 minus t squared, everything multiplied by 100. So let's put the 100 here. And yeah, let's write it like that. Uh, that is... I think that is the proper way of writing it. And then from there on, we have 484t squared minus 176t plus 16. And then minus 4 multiplied by 100, that is minus 400. And then minus t squared multiplied by 100, that is minus 100 t squared so like terms 100 t squared 484 t squared so 484 minus 100 that is 384 t squared and then 176 um don't we have a like term <laughs> no we don't have a like term so this is just 176 right and then what else are we left with um we are left with plus 16 and minus 400 okay i was starting to wonder where the minus 16 is coming from but then i, I can see it now and then the minus this is a 170 60 and then a minus 384 um yeah that's it so t is gonna be equals to minus b 176 plus or minus the square root of b squared b squared minus 176 squared minus 4 a is 384 and c is 384 also everything divided by 2a a is 384 so t t is equals to minus 1.26 or t is equals to let me find the other value of t so t is equals to 0 0.8 essentially. So these these are our critical values. We have an inequality. So we need to uh, find the actual values of t. Let's substitute a value between these two and see if our equation is going to be satisfied. A value between those two numbers, we can just substitute. Let's see. We can just substitute 0. 0 is between those two numbers. So let me substitute 0 here in this equation as a value of t and see if the answer is less than 0. So I'm going to have 22 multiplied by 0. So I just have minus 4 squared on the first bracket. And then plus 4, 1, uh, plus t squared, not plus 4, but minus 4, minus 4. And then 1 plus t squared, uh, t squared what do we have there? Uh, t, we are substituting 0, so we can forget about that. Multiplied by 100. The answer is less than 0. Okay, so our answer, minus 1.76, and then t, 1.76 or 1.26? This is 1.26. 1.26. And t lies between these two numbers. Wow, what a long and painful question.